In this episode, we look at how to pitch your services better. Welcome to episode 51 of the Honest Entrepreneur Show. My name's Tom Ross, and I am strongly considering another intro for this show. Guys, I did a recent question on prioritization. Right now, I'm struggling with this because you guys are being so amazing. The show is picking up momentum. It's going really well. I'm getting more comments and DMs than ever. I can feel an incredible community growing here, and it annoys me that I don't have more time. And I hate time as an excuse because I always say we've got the same number of hours in the day. It's all prioritization and working smart. But like literally by the time I've done the day job and I've responded to everyone's amazing comments, I look at my to-do list and there's still glaring things there for my personal brand where it's like I'm just not touching them. And I want to be doing a better job. I want to have a better Facebook group than ever. I want to do up the website. I want to be putting articles out there like scaling out the the part-time team who I work with, the lovely Marco and, and Rachel. I just want to do better for you guys. I want to scale it all up because I'm ambitious as shit with this stuff. But I have to keep reminding myself one step at a time. It is getting there. I can't do it all overnight. So this self-therapy session that I just ranted, I hope that helps all of you at home as well to relate. This question is from Gina. I'd like to know how to approach small and medium businesses that don't have marketing or design departments to pitch a unsolicited design idea. I'm thinking about packaging design. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Thumbs up. First of all, Rachel, you're awesome. Uh, I mean, leave a comment below, actually. It's not even question of the day yet. But if you're enjoying Rachel's fantastic voiceovers, thumbs up. Leave a thumbs up in the comments. I think she's nailing it. So Gina's question, how to approach companies if they don't inherently have like a design department. I kind of get where she's coming from here because we will find it easier to relate to people who are like us. So it's easier to hit up like a creative director and say, hey, like we speak the same language. Maybe I could help you with X, Y, Z. But the reality is often we get some kind of corporate gatekeeper who doesn't speak our language, who is a very different kind of personality. And so my answer would be try and learn their language. I think calibrating to the person you're dealing with is huge in general social situations, but very much so within pitching. So if they are speaking a different language and they don't really care about design, it's your job if you're selling to them to actually figure out what they do care about. You know, is it that it's some kind of middle management person who's going to be the initial decision maker? And what they care about is they really want to impress their boss. Or is it the company owner who desperately wants to like expand into a new area of their business? Whatever it might be, you need to figure that out. And when you talk to that person, you need to make it more about them than you. And this is classic marketing, but also sales, right? So when you're pitching anything, you're not saying like, give me this work. I want your money. I need your money. This is going to help me. It's very much like I can bring something to you and your business. And that's the conversation you need to be having. So a key point here is like sell to the people who want to be sold to and who need what you're offering. So instead of just blanketly putting it out there because you're like, oh, these look like awesome people to work with and that's going to look shiny on my CV or in my portfolio, actually do the research and go a little bit deeper and more specific and figure out the people who are going to be receptive to what it is you're offering. So Gina talks about packaging design. I'm trying to think of like the exact angles around this, but like I use my company. Like imagine if we had mentioned on a podcast recently, which I'm pretty sure we have, that we're interested in doing um, t-shirts and that kind of stuff and, and some merch. And also we publicly talked about the fact that we send personalized gifts to our community because we're awesome like that and because we love our community and we love our customers and we care. So maybe um, Gina would reach out to us. She would find the appropriate person to talk to and then she'd give context and she'd say, hey, I'm not coming in cold. Like I listen to your podcast. I follow what you guys are all about. I paid attention. I'm really passionate about packaging design and I know you've repeatedly talked about the fact that you do these cool things for your customers. So how about this? I can create some custom design cuts packaging that I can give to you at scale very affordably and that's going to just make your packages that you send out to customers look 
incredible. It's going to be all branded up in your style. It's going to look freaking amazing. I would love to work with you guys because I think that's going to bring so much value to your brand building and really, really tie in your brand connection with these customers that you do these gestures for. What do you say? And that's one hypothetical example out of a billion. But you can probably see where I'm going here, Gina, because the answer is not just to message them on LinkedIn and say, hi, I do packaging design. You are ideal client for me. So please give me work. Like most people finesse it a little bit more than that in their wording, but that is the underlying sentiment. That's what 99.9% .9 of people do. And it sucks because no one's going to respond to that. So go deep, go specific, show that you've done your homework and you actually care and see that you actually know what they want and what they care about. So the more digging, the better actually research yourself on their company and then go in super personalized. So it's not a spammy generic cut and paste template you send out to 5,000 people. You're going to the key decision maker and it's like, hey, John, like love that you're into X, Y, Z. I've been doing my homework. I learned this about you and your company. And I think this could be a great fit. Like, what do you say? And here's the reasons why this is going to help you in a ton of ways and, and what it can do for you rather than what it can do for me. So I hope that helps Gina and everyone else question of the day who is your ideal client like if you're in the service game or if you're in the product game like what is your dream person that you would love to work for and this could be a hypothetical uh, persona or this could be like an actual customer or celebrity or person let me know in the comments below Thank you so, so much for watching this episode. I appreciate you guys so much. I'm really enjoying the YouTube show. If you are too, then be sure to hit the subscribe icon and tick the little bell to get notifications when I post new content on this platform.